As Eudine Barber kindly took a moment to thank Kurt Madsen and the homosexual activists who you quote throughout your speech, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for opening yourself up and your followers to the world to show that although in 2008 there were 354 natural disasters in which 236 thousand people died and 211 million 628 thousand people were affected you and your, your religious and moral warriors would rather focus your attention and millions upon millions of dollars on making sure that two women can't get married in California I want to thank you for allowing me to see that your morality is not one that seeks the good of all people, one that strives to end suffering in the world. Instead, it is a religious war that seeks to divide people from their human nature, which, for the most, I truly believe, is to be compassionate and to be good to their fellow citizens. And that is the truth I would like to hear you speak. Why do you feel millions of dollars need to be poured into ads that lie about children being more susceptible to molestation because Joseph and Carl are going to tie the knot out in Iowa? How does their marriage or their right to get married harm you? And why would you pour those millions of dollars into those advertisements instead of generously helping unfortunate people in Haiti? Then, Mr. Barber, when you speak of how much you love the sinners and just want them to change, there you go and speak against the Declaration of Independence by not allowing a percentage of the population to live their lives with liberty and the pursuit of happiness because that pursuit of happiness does not line up with your version of morality. Many pursue their happiness with the person they love and give to the community around them without harming the world. I would like to know who exactly, and really, I, all I want is to just to know one name, that's all. Who exactly has been hurt or shunned because Ellen DeGeneres and Portia got married? And though they, since they seem like pretty nice ladies, they may not be a good example of those gays ruining society. So, for that, what about Air Force pilot Lieutenant Colonel Victor Ferenbach? Someone surely must have been harmed, or died, even, because a gay man such as him served honorably and was decorated repeatedly in the United States Air Force for the last 19 years. Please, I'm begging you, just one name, that's all. I want to hear that one person who was harmed. With your impassioned words at the podium during your speech, I assume you must have a veritable treasure trove of human interest stories, as you call them, of the people who have been harmed. Next, for the record, I don't call you a hater as you claim those who disagree with you would. Instead, I simply call you a deceiver, a speaker of half-truths, a spreader of misinformation. You call out the supposed agenda of Kirk and Madsen to attack their ways of getting the public to side and sympathize with homosexuals. You talk about them hiding the mechanics of homosexuality so as to disguise the true nature of the agenda. I recently watched an advertisement for the campaign in the state of Maine to repeal same-sex marriage law. The tactics that you condemn so harshly of not telling the whole story are laid bare in those advertisements by the groups against gay marriage, telling ominously how schools will be talking to children about gay marriage and sex as though it were to become a subject wedged between mathematics and, I don't know, social studies? Geography? <laughs> the tactics that are being used by this so-called gay agenda are simply the same ones your colleagues use in every campaign that you attempt to take rights away from gay people. Gay citizens of the United States of America. Citizens like you. Also, in terms of deceit, remember that not all Christians agree with you. Sure, 85% of voters who identified as evangelical or born again voted against same-sex marriage in California. However, only 42% of voters who identified as Christians, not evangelical or born again, voted to oppose same-sex marriage. That means the majority of those Christians voted to uphold same-sex marriage. 
to invite gays to the same marriage table that they can participate in. And I'm sure you believe they're completely misguided. And a quick note on your mention of the gay agenda softening the idea of gay sex and not detailing it in public. Would you prefer that everyone in the country speaks openly and explicitly about what they do in the bathroom? Maybe you would, judging by your preoccupation on gay sex, but I would prefer that everyone keep their bedroom antics to themselves, gay, straight, or anywhere in between. The two things I would like to touch upon last are your comments about no systematic discrimination and ex-gay conversion. For the systematic discrimination part, I have to say you're absolutely wrong. Let's just say a public official in South Carolina divorces his wife and leaves his three kids. Then he goes and marries a nice lady from South America. And let's suppose he wants to bring her back to the United States to show off his state and maybe, later, take her hiking on the Appalachian Trail. It won't be too difficult to get the paperwork, and eventually she can become a U.S. citizen. Meanwhile, men and women who have been with their same-sex partners for the last 5, 10, 35 years have little hope to even sponsor those partners to become U.S. citizens. But you say there's no systematic discrimination. How about the young woman just married in Iowa who goes to Iraq and is killed by a roadside bomb? Her wife sits at home wondering why there is no email, no phone call, until the second cousin of the Iraq soldier calls to let her know that her wife is dead two weeks after the funeral took place. But there's no systematic discrimination. The last point on this discrimination is something I want to quote you on. Yes, you say, there are anecdotal instances of gay bashing. This is where you really rely upon your tactics of deceit. It's quite bold of you, yet utterly reprehensible. Matthew Shepard being pistol whipped, tied to a fence, and left to die as someone almost unrecognizable even to his parents is not anecdotal. And if you were really going to speak the truth, you would apologize right now to the family of Matthew Shepard and to the family of Lawrence King and to the families of thousands of other children who have been beaten or murdered or driven to suicide by your lies and the people you speak to who believe them wholeheartedly. Speak the truth to that, great deceiver, Dean Barber. As for conversion, <laughs> the number of suicides and families torn apart by it because it didn't work for them is far greater than your success stories. And finally, I would like to quote the Bible, too, for my own purposes as you do. And I'll simply just skip a few verses down from where you quoted Corinthians, and I will go to 1 Corinthians 13. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized into the name of Paul? Well, answers, Christ was not divided, so why must you try to divide his children? Dean Barber. Paul was not crucified, and no one that I know was baptized in the name of Paul, yet your leaders and colleagues quote Romans as though we should be following those words more closely than the words of Jesus in the Gospel. And those words that Jesus spoke never included a wholesale condemnation of homosexuality. So in closing, Dean Barber, when you are ready to come back to the Church of Christ and leave the Church of J. Matt Barber, feel free to get on your knees and repent to that sovereign God.